Welcome to our live stream service from South Park Christian Center in National City. So glad that you've joined us here in person, and for those of you that are tuning in, we're glad that you are listening, and may God bless this service to your heart. Would you stand with me as we read the, the word this morning? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you know it, say it with me. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me as righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your God and your staff may comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. Isn't that a precious word? How true it is. Thank you, Father, that you are our shepherd, that you walk with us every step of our way. You never fail us, Lord. I thank you for these people who know and love and serve you and trust you in their very lives. Meet us today, Lord, in our homes and in this room as we worship together. And as we look at your word, Lord, may we draw strength from it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you as Pastor Rick and his team lead us in worship. Amen. Amen. You know, I was just thinking a moment ago as we were preparing to do the Facebook broadcast, as we would, what we would call it, or Facebook Live. And so those of you at home, it's amazing the preparation that goes on before. We literally do a countdown for you of 10, and now we do that. But you know what is interesting? I thought for a moment, you know, the Facebook Live audience kind of misses out on what we are feeling and experiencing here in this place. The joy that we have of being with one another, of just seeing one another. Hey, Ajesha, so good to see you guys. I mean, it's awesome. We get to see people that we haven't seen, or we get to just get to experience people and just just be with one another. Tracy, so good to see you too. You know, and, and even though you're at home and you're enjoying this, can I tell you, you're missing out? <laughs> you're missing out on some joy? Are they missing out on some joy? Yes. Come on, can we just give a shot?
Senhor. Yes. Oh God, you are awesome. Yes. Yes. We serve a mighty faithful yes. God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please your name. Listen to the words of this song.
Thumbs and knees don't like to crawl. Amen, brother. <laughs> Anybody here over 60? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Nobody else is admitting it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes I have a hard time thanking, being grateful to God. Not because I'm not, but because I don't know how to express it. It's just like trying to express it to one of you, you know, when you do something nice for each other, sometimes it can be kind of hard. And I think, uh, uh, there's a musician by the name of Andre Crouch, some of you may know him. Some years ago, he penned the words to a song that probably became his most noted song. And he must have had the same problem. And he penned the words to this song called My Tribute. <laughs> in this. 
this church family. They're all so dear to us. I want to give a message that I began a few weeks ago, and little did I know that it would be so fitting for me and for all of us today. It's titled, Do Not Fret. When we think of that word, what do we think of? Worry. That's the first thing that comes to my mind, and I thought that was all there was to it, and I looked it up, and Webster's Dictionary had a few other things to add. It said, do not be annoyed, and do not be discontent. They're all kind of part of that fretting, aren't they? King David wrote a wonderful psalm in the book of Psalms, and I want us to look together there today. If you turn to Psalm 37, We'll look at most of the verses in that song. Maybe you know it and you've already feasted on it for many years. I've read it so many times and at times in my life it's been especially meaningful. But if you haven't, you will find it very precious today. It's a psalm of instruction that's written to you and me rather than to God. Most psalms are an expression of love and appreciation and so on from God. But as I've been reading it, it's as if David were living in our day, listening to all that we are experiencing in our lives. In this psalm, he presents the heritage of the righteous and the calamity of the wicked. In this psalm, he gives us the key to all that God has for us in the day we're living in. Verse 1, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Do you know of any evildoers in our day? Are we seeing any workers of iniquity? We are, aren't we? But I want you to know God has it covered. Look at verse 2. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. In other words, they'll be gone. Instead of fretting, David tells us what to do in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. You see, fretting accomplishes no good thing. Trusting is just the opposite. And look at David's word to us. Trust in the Lord. Is the Lord trustworthy? Yes. Have you proven him? Daily, don't we? Don't we see how trustworthy he is? And then he says, do good. So, you know what that means? It means bless others with what you have. Do good to other people. And then he says, dwell in the land. What land? Wherever God has planted you. Dwell in that land. And then, number four, feed on his faithfulness. To me, that's a reminder to remind myself every day of the faithfulness of God. Has God been good to you? Yes. Is he just loading you with goodness and mercy? Then David goes on in verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord. That is, find joy in him. Find joy in loving him and joy in serving him. And then notice what will happen if you do that. He will give you the desires of your heart. I spoke to someone this morning. Every time I pray for this precious one, I say, Lord, give her the desires of her heart. And she shared a wonderful blessing that God had poured out on her life just this week. He will give you the desires of your heart. That is, he will satisfy you with himself. Isn't that precious? And then there's more, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Walking in faith gives us the opportunity to trust God to fulfill his word to us to trust in his character, to believe what the Bible teaches. It says, rest in the Lord. Are you tired of fighting the battle today? Are you a bit weary? We all get to that point, don't we? And he says in this verse, rest in the Lord. Let him fight the battle for you and wait patiently for him. Can I tell you that waiting is hard? Is waiting hard for you? And waiting patiently is even harder, isn't it? There's one way to wait, and there's another way to wait, but to wait patiently for him means trusting that his ways are the best. 
And while waiting, he reminds us again, do not fret. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. When you and I look around us, we see evil seemingly in our day going unchecked. But can I tell you, God is fully aware of everything that's going on on planet Earth. Nothing is taking him by surprise. Because of that, we can fully trust him. Let's read on. David says, don't let it get to you. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Sometimes as we look at the happenings around us, we do become angry. I'm afraid we fret a bit. But he says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. And once again, he says, do not fret. It only causes harm. Can I tell you that anger and wrath and wrath and fretting are negative emotions? And they do affect our bodies, our minds, our souls, and our spirits if we give in to them. Have you noticed? Verse 9 tells us why we can leave evildoers to the Lord. For evildoers <laughs> shall be cut off. By some sudden stroke of divine justice in the midst of their prosperity, we will look and they will be gone. Can I encourage you with that? God is in charge. God is in control. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Verse 9 goes on to say, But those who trust in the Lord shall inherit the earth. Verse 10, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. We would like it to be today. But God says, a little while, a little while longer. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. I want to tell you that the believer who waits patiently for the timing of the Lord has nothing to fear or be envious about. Your God will not forsake you. Note the words soon and a little while that appear in that chapter. They were true when they were written, and they are true in our day as well. Live expecting God to show up. Will you do that? Mm -hmm. To show up in your life and to show up in our world. I'm expecting to see him do amazing things in the days to come. Are you? Yes. Yes. Amen. Don't lose that trust and that hope. Verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I want to tell you, meekness is not weakness. If you know anybody that's meek, you know that they are really strong on the inside. It's a gentleness of spirit that indicates remarkable strength. That's the definition of meekness. Let me read that again. It's a gentleness of spirit, but it indicates a remarkable strength on the inside. And the result is an abundance of peace. How many could use an abundance of peace today? Amen? Amen. If you long for that, it's yours. He has it for you. Verse 12. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. Verse 13. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. Reminding us that God doesn't lose track of anything. When the wicked are mistreating you, just know they're in God's sight, and he's going to take care of it. He laughs at them because he knows what their end is. Verse 14, the wicked have drawn their sword and bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay those who are of upright conduct. Every week I get reports from people that are really hurting because of the darts that are being thrown at them. The tendency of our heart is to become fretful, anxious, worried, annoyed, discontent, angry, all kinds of emotions, aren't they? Because the enemy never gives up. But God, notice verse 15, look what's going to happen to them. Their sword will enter their own heart, and their bows will be broken. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. If you do, you're on a winning team. Yes. If you don't, I feel sorry for you. Get on the right team. <laughs> Our God keeps a record, dear ones, of every inequity and of the oppression of the poor. There will be a day of reckoning. 
verse 16, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of the wicked. Amen? Amen. How many of you have a little? Amen. How many of you have a lot? I know you have God's blessing upon your life. You have a lot. The little that we have is better than the riches of the wicked. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank God for it. Verse 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. You know what he upholds us with? His mighty right hand. Amen. Think of God's hand holding you. Is he adequate? Is he up to it? Yeah, he can manage it. Verse 18. Look at the wonderful promise. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance will be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. We don't know what's ahead. We don't know what's around the corner. But can I tell you, God already has it figured out. And if you're on his team, he's going to take care of you. You're not going to want for anything. Amen? Amen. The wicked who don't understand this are hoarding and hoarding not only toilet paper, but everything else. <laughs> <laughs> to get ready for whatever may be coming. But you know what? You and I don't have to. Our trust is in the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 And keep it there. The promises of his love and care for us are so amazing. Notice that God knows our days, and his attention and care for details in our life show his constant love and mercy. Note also how God makes a difference between the wicked and the righteous. He doesn't get mixed up. When he goes to pour out his wrath, he doesn't have to stop and think, now is this a good one or a bad one? He knows us. He knows us well. The wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord are the splendor like the splendor of the meadows shall vanish its smoke, they shall vanish away. Let me read that again. The wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish into smoke, they shall vanish away. But, look at verse 23 and 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. How many steps do we take at a time? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's how much he cares. Can you imagine God caring about every step you take? I pray that prayer every morning. Lord, keep my feet from falling. Those of you who know me, I know I have a history of falling. <laughs> Steps of good man, order of the Lord. And he delights in his way. God loves you. He cares about you. He takes joy in you. He delights in the way you are running this race. And though he fall, thank you, Lord, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. There's that mighty right hand in the Though you stumble and fall, he'll be there to uphold you with his right hand. I could tell you a lot of fall stories and how God has protected and taken care of me in the midst of them. Can you feel the Father's love today? Yeah. I hope you can. Not only does he know your days, but he knows your steps. He knows how many days you have left. I don't know, but he does. Can you trust him? Yes. Amen. 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 He doesn't direct us from afar, but he's walking with us, upholding us when we fall. And he delights in us. He takes joy in our progress. He's glad we're making it. It delights him that we're trusting in him. And he's so close that we can even hear his whisper saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Oh, how he loves you, dear ones. And he's upholding you with his right hand. We have felt his strength this week. It's like a parent watching his child learn to walk. 
We've all taken joy as little David and baby Adir have taken their first steps in this building. We delighted in their progress and we protected them from every fall and we upheld them in our hands, didn't we? You know how much we care about a baby learning to walk. Yes. Can I tell you, your Heavenly Father cares that much about you. Yeah. He's upholding you, walking with you, delighting in your progress, picking you up when you fall. See your Father's love in this for you today. He cares for you every moment, every step of the way. Do we ever outgrow his care for us? Ever? No. Do you need him all the days of your life? Yes. Look at verse 25. This is my testimony. I have been young, and now I'm old. This is also my testimony. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsake, nor his seed begging bread told someone the other day, I know the Lord too well, and I love him too much to ask why. How about you? Amen. You trust him? Amen. Do you really trust him? Yes. If you do, you'll know his strength in the hard places. You will sense his love. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, and I've got to tell you, I never will. Amen. Amen. Nor his descendants begging bread. I marvel over God's constant love and care for me and for my children and for all those who love and serve him. Do you know that your descendants are blessed because of you and your prayers? They think it's something they did if they don't know the Lord. Verse 27, there's more instruction for us. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. Oh, how faithful our God is in his love for us. Verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. Amen. I love those words forever, don't you? How long is forever? Forever. No end. There is no end. In our day, we have seen the wicked in great power spreading himself like a native green tree. Have you seen that? Have you seen the wicked just strutting and say, look what we've done and look what we're going to do? But look at his future in verse 36. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I saw him, but he could not be found. See, God has prepared his end. He's taking care of it all. Verse 37, mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. The closing verses hold wonderful promises for the righteous. Look at verses 39 and 40 with me. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Amen. Say that with me. He, he is, is their strength, strength in time of trouble. How many of you have ever been in trouble of some kind? Oh, we all have, haven't we? Have you found his strength? He is your strength in time of trouble. We have found that so true in these last days goes on to say, the Lord will help them and deliver them. He will deliver them from the wicked and save them. But here's the important thing. You know why he will? Read it with me. Because they trust in him. Isn't that precious? It's nothing we do all of ourselves. It's because our trust is in him. And that's why he is our strength in the time of trouble. He is our salvation. Wonderful promises. And then he goes on and says, He will deliver them from the wicked and save them because we trust in him. I can tell you the Lord never fails his trusting child. Wait patiently for the timing of the Lord for whatever you're believing him for. Remember some important things. He knows our days. He orders our steps. He upholds us with his hand. 
He will never forsake us. He preserves us forever, and therefore he says, do not fret. Do not become worried, annoyed, or angry because of evildoers. Let me say that again. Don't become worried or angry with them or annoyed because of evildoers, because they will be cut off. Instead, God's people, you and me, need to do this. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Dwell in the place he has planted you. Feed on his faithfulness. Remind yourself of this every day. Delight yourself. Take joy in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Rest in the Lord and know his peace. At night when you go to bed, I say, Lord, I leave it all with you. You work the night shift. I can't because I'm tired. I've worked the day shift and I'm tired. <laughs> you know what? Our God never slumbers and never sleeps. So we can trust our nights to him as well. Wait patiently for him. His timing is perfect. Sometimes we wish he'd do it quicker and sooner, but we can trust him. His timing is perfect. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. You'll save yourself from having an early heart attack. It's too hard on your body and mind and soul and spirit to fret. Don't do it. Don't go there. Know that your steps are ordered of the Lord. Walk your life every day in step with him. Know that he is upholding you. Depart from evil and do good to as many people as you can. People need to see your face these days. Let them. Get it? Let them see your face. I see people that are starving for a smile. Strangers I've never met, the smile at them and their heart melts. We've lost so much not seeing each other. You know what I'm saying? Let them see your face. Let them know you care. They probably are hurting as badly as you have been. Know that God is upholding you. Depart from evil and do good. Wait on the Lord. He is our strength in the time of trouble. He is our help. He's our deliverer. And he will save us. Why? Because we trust in him. Amen? Amen. Read this psalm often. Take refuge in it. It's a good place to hide. Every verse will apply to your life. There you will find the help you need in this turbulent world. Nothing is taking our God by surprise. He's ready and he's well prepared for every situation and every evildoer. You won't find him caught off guard saying, oh, I wish I'd have thought of that. He's got it all under control. And he wants us to be well prepared also. He's made every provision for us in his word. His word is a love letter to you. Read it. Feast on it. Don't live below your privilege, loved ones. Read his word daily. It will become an anchor for your soul. David in Psalm 1914 said that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God knows the thoughts we think. So when he says, let the meditation of your heart be acceptable, he means, let the thoughts you think be acceptable in his sight. If you need prayer this morning, please come as the worship team is going to sing. Make room, and others will join you as we pray.
he taught me to trust in him. And part of trusting is surrendering. Surrendering this. What I want to do. Any situation that comes up, you can be quick to react. I know sometimes I can be there. Quick to react. With my own way of thinking, my own way of wanting to do things. But if I trust in the Lord, and know that He's going to take care of it, then I'm surrendering this. I'm surrendering what I think I want to do, and I'm giving it to Him. And I'm saying, Lord, you take care of it because I know and I trust that the outcome will be for my good. And to know that, to know that, can I tell you, is freedom. There is a freedom and a joy in surrendering what you might want to do and trusting completely in him. Lord, we just give you praise today.